Hey, welcome back. As promised last week, we talked to you a little bit about what we're going to bring you as far as updates on this Dragonfly system. And so I'm back here with Tom today. He's got his demo unit prepared, and he's going to bring to you a little bit of information about what is this Dragonfly system, what does it do for the new A2 components, why is it important, and really a little bit of overview of what to expect as you're starting to get in the install. All right, Tom, you got this amazing demo board here. Well done, by the way, it looks awesome. <laughs> um, can you kind of take a deep dive for everyone and let us know kind of what we have going on here, uh, how it all integrates together, and then any tips or tricks uh, that people need to watch out for if they go to install one of these? Yeah, sure. So <clears throat> here we have a pretty standard system for mm -hmm. gas furnace with a 24 volt communication from the thermostat okay. and a basic 24 volt AC contactor for gotcha. uh, an outdoor unit. This Dragonfly board that we have here, the non-A2L furnace integration kit, mm -hmm. <clears throat> connects to both our 24 volt thermostat and our furnace PCB. Okay. And then what is the piece that we have up here at the top? So, Looks like a new piece. Correct. This new piece actually comes on the evaporator coils. Okay. A little six foot cord here. It's gonna come out of the evaporator coil where we plug it into our Dragonfly board. And that is the leak detection sensor, correct? Yes. Okay. This is a R32 refrigerant leak sensor. Okay, gotcha. All right, so first thing on our Dragonfly board, we have our four pin connector for R32 refrigerant leak sensor. <clears throat> Here on our uh, black pin connector, we have two sets of wires. In blue is our wiring to the thermostat, in green is our wiring to the AC contactor. And then over here we have our green pin connector, as you can see in red, going to our furnace PCB. Now up here you'll notice we have a VT in and a VT out. Those are, it's a normally open 24 volt circuit and it's there to energize an auxiliary ventilation system in the event that one is installed or you need another one installed. So here's our alarm output. <clears throat> The alarm output is only to be used with very specific A2L accessories. Wiring instructions for those accessories will be included in the insta installation manuals for those products. And then next to the wiring, the four pin connector for the refrigerant sensor, we have a red LED and a push button that we're gonna learn how to use when we get into how to test this to make sure it's working correctly after our installation. All right, so now we have the Dragonfly in live functioning mode, right. if you will. Uh, Tom has went ahead and wired it up to this Goodman furnace. And so, Tom, can you kind of walk us through here? Uh, we can see we have power to it, the light is blinking. Kind of walk us through where everything's going. Uh, and then the placement of the sensor here, which I think is, is kind of important for the install. Sure. So, first thing you'll notice when you get the R32 coils is this R32 sensor is going to be mounted right here on our drain accessory <clears throat> or our drain ports so we want to make sure that's nice and solid and stable this wire is going to be coiled up inside of there you'll take it run it through a knockout which will show you later on in the evaporator coil but that'll be in the door right so yeah. it'll come right out the front of the door right here okay. in that front panel there's a little knockout right there that we're going to uh, gotcha. use and there's a little grommet to go inside there so we don't get any friction sure. on this cord Inside of this cord, comes and plugs into our uh, Dragonfly. We see I have a slow flashing red LED. Mm -hmm. That tells us that it's in normal operation. Okay, and so it's we'll working be, properly, basically. Correct. Okay. We have our low voltage from our thermostat and our contactor mm -hmm. to our Dragonfly, and our low voltage from our Dragonfly down to our furnace PCB. Okay, I'm going right into the board there. There's really nothing too different about this. Nothing okay. should be unfamiliar to any of our guys out there. Now, once we plug this in, it's gonna be very important before you energize that system, make sure this is plugged in. Otherwise, it may, we have to de-energize the system, wait a few minutes, and have to reconfigure, and it takes a long time. Because if you don't, it'll set it into it alert mode. Navigation. Is that right? Okay. Yeah, it's okay. automatically gonna think that it has an R32 presence. So once we've installed it, we have this plugged in, we've verified and confirmed all of our wiring connections. We're gonna test the system. This push button right here next to our red LED, we're gonna push that twice within five seconds. Okay. 
okay? Rapid flashing, it's gonna go into a leak mitigation mode. <clears throat> And the, the, when you say test, this is testing to make sure mm -hmm. the Dragonfly unit is working properly. Yeah. All we're doing right now is the system says, yes, this is going to work properly. Okay. We're verifying that this is going to mitigate that system. Gotcha. Now, this test will last for a period of five minutes. Mm -hmm. However, once we're done with the test, if we feel we need to, push that button one more time, and it takes it out okay. of that verification. Mode. So you hear it click, mm -hmm. and then it goes back to the slow yep. red flash from the, the rapid yep. red flash. Okay. And then all we need to do is test that to verify that it's functioning correctly. Yeah. Verifying our way and just make that part of our uh, commissioning or pre startup checklist. Okay. Awesome. So you've got the cover back on, mm -hmm. on the cover, you're talking about the hole here. So your wire comes from your sensor out there so you can keep the cover on and then into the top of the Dragonfly. Yeah. Right to our four pin connector on the Dragonfly. Okay. Uh, anything else they need to know when it comes to installing tips or tricks or anything else that you found helpful about the unit? So first thing you should always do is read the installation manual cover to cover. Uh, one thing I'll note in there, there was a bit of confusion on some of the verbiage. This is not to be mounted on the furnace or the cased coil. You can put it on maybe some return ductwork okay. or a wall nearby or a bulkhead, something like yeah. that. And doesn't it recommend that it goes into some type of board or a stud? So that's why we kind of got this demo unit yeah. here. Okay. Because the reason they don't want to mount it on the furnace or evaporator coil is really a guard against vibration, mm -hmm. which could potentially cause issues. Sure. Okay. Awesome. Well, we appreciate uh, your work today on the uh, schematic demo board on the live unit. Uh, we really hope this is helpful. So we're going to keep bringing you pieces of the A2L conversion. And you want to talk about our next big one, the full uh, demonstration of when you're going to do the install. Yeah, once we get the rest of the R32 equipment here, we're going to do a full R32 install. Okay, so as you see, we've got the coil. We're just waiting on the matching outdoor unit, and that'll be to come. Yep.